Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So for those of you who are finding my channel for the very first time, my name is Marshawn and I'm your life and relationship strategist. It is a beautiful day out here in sunny San Diego. So I decided to come outside once again and give it to y'all again, all right? So today we're actually going to talk about the five ways that you can connect with your partner when you are super busy. Stay tuned. All right, fam, welcome back. So this topic actually came from when I was speaking to one of my clients the other day, and he's like, you know what? I'm super busy, but I really don't want my relationship to crumble and fall. Can you give me a few tips to help me out on how to keep my relationship intact? He's super busy. He's building two companies at the same time. And uh, yeah, it's taking, a lot, taking up a lot of his time. And he consciously knows that he's not spending enough time with his uh, fiance and child. And on top of that, he also understands and knows that he needs to do something different in order to keep his family intact because he does not want to grow the businesses only to lose his family in the long haul. I thought, I thought that that was very um, brave of him to say and also very um, wonderful for him to want to do something different in order to make sure that not only he is building up the business and that is fine, but also to keep his family intact. So here are some of the things that I actually told him and I'm going to tell them to you in just a moment. So the very first thing that you want to do is communicate with your partner, whether it's a him or her, doesn't matter. You're the busy one, but you don't want to lose your family. You don't want to lose your spouse. So you need to communicate to him or to her how special they are to you and that you know that you have not been able to truly connect with them because of the time. But they are very important. They are very special to you. Now, by doing that, that is absolutely going to open up the lines of communication. Maybe he or she has been feeling some type of way because you guys have not spent a lot of time together and you have not basically been appreciative of his or her efforts that they're putting it in. So communicating how special they are and how you don't want to lose your spouse, that is going to be a way to open up the door and uh, the way to open up the door for them to be able to express how they're feeling, but also open up the door for them being more understanding of the time you guys are not spending together. So tell them how special they are and how much they mean to you. The second thing that you want to do is make sure that you schedule your dates. Yes, this is not sexy. When you are a very busy person, you are often tired when it comes time to get home and you just want to relax and do your own thing. But you have to put in the time in order to keep your spouse, in order to keep your family intact while you are building up this busy thing. All right, going back to the dates. After you have planned them, make sure that you keep the date. Plan the date, schedule the date. Okay, it's working out. And then do not let nothing get in the way. Do not let a project get in the way. Do not let, okay, oh my God, two hours have passed. Your spouse, your partner is at the house. They waiting on you. They waiting to spend this time with you only for you to not make them a priority. So once you plan the date, schedule the date, keep the date. Keep the date. Because... When you do this, you're going to show that, yes, I am a priority. I'm busy. I'm busy, 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 busy. But guess what? I want to be, I want to keep you around. Also, you don't have to do this every single day because it's just not possible when you're a busy person. I try to tell my clients at least once a week. And if you cannot do it at least once a week, you need to do it every two weeks, twice a month. Ideally, once a week is the ideal. That way you get six days to be busy as a bee. And you get six days for your partner not to, you know, hound you because y'all communicated on how special you are, but you need to work doing this for whatever, you know, X, Y, and Z time. I need to spend this time doing this, but you are special to me. So you did all of this communication. You didn't plan the date, set the date. You, you know, showed up for the date. Now, after you've done all of that, which is number three, make sure that, we, make sure that you are present on that date. 
Put away that phone. Put away all the technology. Don't worry about who's calling. Don't worry about who's texting. Don't worry about what what project or what big thing needs to be taken care of. Because truth be told, truth be told, all that stuff is still gonna be on your phone when you are finished with your when you are finished with your date. When you're finished with your spouse. Also, your spouse probably don't know. But as a busy person myself, I do know after the date is over, you usually go back to working because now you're satisfied, you're fulfilled, and y'all both got to go off and do your own thing. And you are usually going to get back to work. But guess what? You'll be more refreshed when you do that. You'll be able to concentrate more. You'll be able to think uh, straighter, clearer. When you take a break. And especially taking a break to connect with your spouse, to be there, to be present with your spouse. When you go back, you'll be ready to work. You'll be ready to get all in there once again. But when you are with your spouse, be with your spouse, which is actually point number four. When you're with your spouse, be with your spouse. When you're at work, get to work. As much as you can leave that technology and phone alone, I get it that probably you probably need to do projects on your phone or on your on your computer, etc. So I get that. But as much as possible, make sure that they know that they are a priority by you putting away your technology when you are with them. And obviously doing what you need to do when you're at work. Because you're busy. You're busy, you're busy, you're busy, you're busy. So make the most out of your time with your family. They'll appreciate it and they'll be more understanding and it'll buy you even more time. And just as you're building up the companies and doing what you need to do, you will not be left behind. Your spouse will not be left behind. You won't have a broken family. See, a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs actually get this wrong. They always go hard in the paint for their for their career, for their job, and then they leave their family behind. Not realizing that y'all actually a team. Yeah, you're the one who's out there doing all of the hefty lifting, per se, right? Depending on you know, depending on what you're doing, right? Whether it's physical or not, you're out there doing the heavy lifting. You're spending hours away from the house, but who's taking care of the household? Your team member. Who's taking care of the kids? Who's making sure that all of this, all of the household is running smoothly? Your team member. Your spouse. So, yes, you're physically out there building the company, but you're not building it by yourself. Yeah, physically, right? In theory, yes, you're building the company by yourself, but really you're not. If you look at your entire life, the way the entire system goes, you're over here building the company, but she over there building a the family. Or maybe he, you know, I'm saying it traditionally, but you get my point. Maybe she's the busy one. And you're the one who's the, the caretaker of the family. You're making sure that every, you know, the household is running. It goes both ways. So don't get too big for your britches till you lose your family because I built this company. No, actually, we built this company. And I know I'm going to get some flack on that. I don't care. You can put it down there. But, yeah, you didn't build a company by yourself, boo. You didn't. Because all those times it took to go get the kids and take them to their games and make sure they ate, make sure they clothed, make sure the homework is done. Oh, the bills need to be paid. Cool. Oh, we need to run over here and do this. Cool. All of that's taken care of while you're building the company. And I keep using the air quotes because I want you to understand that you're not building the company by yourself. Number four. Number four is not going to be sexy at all, but please understand that some of your time spent together can be helping your spouse out to do the domestic duties. Yes, the domestic duties. That way you guys are going to be able to connect more. You'll be able to laugh and joke more. Plus, guess what? The house is getting clean, though. And that way it takes some stress off of your spouse who's constantly the one who's, you know, making sure the household is being ran. It also gets some stress off of yourself because it's meaning, it's, it's meaningless, meaning, meaning that you don't have to think about your work your project you don't have to think about any of that right now you can seriously be there with your spouse but also making sure and helping out around the household yes you're gonna be tired yes you're gonna be like oh can we just sit down but your spouse will absolutely appreciate it if you can give them the time energy to help them out to take some stress off of them the fifth thing it really depends on where you're at in your career or if it's um 
you know, basically it depends on how much money you make and how much time you can take away for this particular one. So number five is to plan extended vacations together. Two weeks to four weeks or, you know, again, depending on how much, how long your money is, okay, to a couple months. But extended periods of time where you it's just y'all two to connect or just the family, whatever. But my point is no work, no busy, busy, busy. This is when you for real shut it all the way down. Shut it all the way down so you can connect with your family. Because these are going to be the times that your family remember. Oh, man, we used to be out at the beach, but, I mean, you know, dad wasn't ever there. He was always on his computer still working. Or we used to be at the hotel doing X, Y, and Z, but not mom wasn't really ever there. It was always just the siblings and dad. You want them to have those special memories as well. Not only the children, but your spouse as well. Again, you want to prioritize things. And if you want your spouse to stay around, you have to make them a priority. It doesn't sound sexy when you have to schedule it, but this is the way it'll get done. All right, let me know if any of these resonated with you. Definitely let me know what you do in your household if you are the busy person. And um, how, how do you handle it if you're not the busy person? Would any of these tips help you out? Can you suggest any of these tips to your boo? Definitely let me know. I'll talk to you guys soon. Deuces.